Hey everyone, how y'all doing? My name is Mateo and I am from Exit Muse. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about parallel compression on drums. Why I use it and why I feel like most people should be using it. Uh, not all the times, obviously, when it's appropriate. But if you're doing rock music and a lot of other genres too, and you want drums that are really punchy, really consistently cutting through your mixes and like very present, parallel compression is a tool that you can use to really achieve that kind of sound. So let's start off by opening your DAW and uh, I'm going to open up a session that I'm currently mixing and you guys can take a look at it and see what I've done. All right, everyone. So as I said before, today I'm going to be talking about parallel compression on drums. You can use this in any genre, in any style. It's, it's a tool that I use quite a bit, not just on drums, but a lot of other things. And the benefit of using parallel compression allows you to keep a lot of the natural dynamics of the uncompressed signal, but blend in a heavily compressed version of that signal into each other. What that allows is that you get the dynamics, you get the punch from the original signal, but you never lose that signal in the mix of the song because of the parallel compression, because it's so heavily compressed that it kind of just sits in the mix, kind of like continuous way. So it's something that you can play with in terms of the mix between the clean, uncompressed and between the heavily compressed audio. So it's better if I just show you what I mean, just so you can hear it. Now, this is a song that I've been mixing. I'll play you all the music in its entirety so you can hear what the drums sound like in the mix. And I use parallel compression on these drums. Cool. So that's what the drums sound like in the mix. They're punchy. They're in there. You don't really lose them. You hear everything pretty well. That's with the help of the parallel compression. Now, I use the parallel compression pretty subtle in, in this particular track. So I'll play you an A-B back and forth with the parallel compression and without it, just so you can hear what it sounds like in context with the rest of the song. So I'll start off without it and I'll actually loop the verse section. If you noticed it, I unmuted the parallel compression track and halfway through that verse, just so you could hear the difference with and without. And if you noticed, the snare instantly popped more. There was more low ends in the bass drum and it was like tighter sounding and those toms were like beefy. Now it's in there subtle. So if you didn't hear it, I'll exaggerate a little bit just so you can hear it. So without it, I brought up the level there for the parallel compression so you can hear it. Obviously, it was a little overwhelming in the song because, you know, the snare, the kick, and the tom just, like, basically overpowered everything. So it's a very powerful tool. It's something that you want to use in moderation. You don't want to overkill it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now how to set up your own parallel compression. There are plugins out there that offer a mix or blend function on the compressors themselves. And that is parallel compression built into the compressors. I, however, am not a huge fan of that because there are particular compressors that I really enjoy using that don't have that mix or blend feature built into it. And I also like having the ability to control those two signals independently and use other processors on them. So I'm gonna show you how to set up parallel compression with your drums, with any compressor that you have. All you need is a compressor, an auxiliary track, and buses, yeah. So I'm gonna set up another parallel compression track. Let's create a new track, and we'll keep it in stereo if you want your drums in stereo, and we set it to auxiliary. 
There we are. I'm just going to use the stock BF76 from Avid because I really like it. Now, what I normally do is for this particular style of music, it's rock. So I like my drums a little gritty. So I will put it on Nuke, which is what this compressor is famous for. And I like to slam everything. So that way you've got fast attack, fast release, and basically just slamming the compressor to the point where it's distorting. Now, that's a matter of taste for myself in this particular track. That's what I did. You, however, can do it in a more subtle way. But the whole point of parallel compression is having the ability to be excessive with compression and then blend it in with the overall track. And it ends up sounding much more natural than if you were just to use that compressor the way it is. So now we're going to uh, bust the essential parts of the kit that we want to beef up. Those things are the kick, the snare top and bottom, the toms, and that is it. You do not want to bust the overheads or any cymbals to the parallel compressor because cymbals do not do well with heavy, heavy compression in this particular context. This is meant to bring out the beef in your drums to kind of make your snare and kick and toms really pop in your drum kit. Throwing in the cymbals will basically make everything sound super wishy-washy and not particularly pleasant. So we're going to send these guys to the, uh, oh, actually, we want to set up uh, the input first. So let, for the sake of this example, I'm going to set it up like that. So I'm busing it to 35 and 36. And I'm going to put everything at Unity Gain because I'm just taking the balance from my current mix that I have. I'm also going to solo this. And if we listen to the drums, we should hear the mix. I'm going to bring this down so, you know, in case it's really loud. So you can see that we're getting level, beautiful. So I'm gonna slowly bring it up now. So you can hear how it just made the snare and the kick pop more. Now I'm gonna bring it in context with the rest of it so you can hear how it sounds in context with the rest of the kit. Beautiful. If I take it out now, you'll hear without the parallel compression. And now with it. So that is how you use parallel compression in this particular context with drums. You can play around with this with different compressors that have different characters, that have different features on them. You can even use compressors that have high pass filters on them, like low cuts or whatever, to you know have different frequencies trigger the compressor so that way you kind of get the compressor to react differently to the drums. You can use multiband compressors, you can use whatever you want. And the cool thing is you can also EQ this compressor sounds with whatever your choice of EQ that you want to kind of get the particular sound out of it that you want. So try that out. See how that works for you. If you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to me. Leave your questions in the comments below. Also like and share this with your friends, family, loved ones, pets, if you know they use recording equipment. And everything you've seen here is not just for Pro Tools. It is also applicable to any other digital audio workstation that you use. So happy mixing, people. Until next time, I'm Mateo from Exit Muse. Take care.